Hey, thanks for joining me today for episode 28 of Business in the Bedroom, a bootstrapper's guide to doing it. I'm your host, producer Jemmy, providing practical advice for the newbie entrepreneur. And today I'm going to talk to you about showcasing your sizzle to sell your brand. This episode is brought to you by Flintstone Media. Listen in and let's do this. In the last episode, I talked about Google's suite services, mainly the top three, Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Slides, while also sharing a lot of the general reasons why I've loved, loved, loved using Google's suite of additional apps and tools as I've grown my business. And I had planned on taking a deeper dive and getting into some additional Google suite tools, but... That is going to have to wait because this week, well, by the time you're hearing this, it will already have happened, but this upcoming Friday, I am speaking virtually for the She Podcasts Live Conference 2021. I'm super excited about that and very, very proud of my friends, Jessica Kupferman and Elsie Escobar for all that they've accomplished over the last few years building the She Podcast brand. So if you're a female podcaster, female identifying podcaster, or just supportive of us, then please consider joining the She Podcast community on Facebook or going to their website and being part of the conference next year. But this year, I'm speaking virtually on the topic of showcasing your sizzle to sell your brand. So I thought I would share my presentation and notes with you here as well. And by recording it here for you on Business in the Bedroom first, I got it like a, as a practice run, right? So yay, it's called multitasking people. <laughs> and this is also a very good time for me to bring up this discussion on showcasing your sizzle to sell your brand because showcasing my sizzle over these last several years to build my brand, the Flintstone Media brand, the Florida Podcast Network brand, all that stuff. All of that is what has propelled me to be noticed time and time again to be well positioned for some amazing opportunities, a couple of which I will share with you at the end of this episode. So whatever you're positioning yourself, you need to position yourself for This episode is for you because I'm taking my content, which I'll be presenting at Cheap Podcast from a podcasting perspective and presenting it here for you as a more general business strategy. So whether you are a podcaster or not, this episode is going to be packed with solid advice to help you in building your brand and doing so by showcasing your sizzle. So the most important element to any branding these days is the person or the people behind the brand. That's you. And if you don't believe me, uh, just like Google cancel culture. Oh, wait. Crickets, crickets. <laughs> so you have to get out of your own way when it comes to putting yourself out there. You really do have to be front and center of your brand. So the number one thing that means is that most of us have to quiet our own internal naysayer. We are the worst at having imposter syndrome. So many of us suffer from that. Essentially what it is, is like subtly dismissing and devaluing, sometimes not so subtly, (laughs) devaluing your own knowledge and skills. And if you listen back to episode two of this show, I go into a lot of how to deal with, with that dang on imposter syndrome and that dang on naysayer. They're the worst, okay? And so, of course, I'll include a link in the show notes to the episode for your, your for your convenience. But we'll review a, a bit of that again today because it is super important. And one practice that can help that I really didn't get into on that episode, episode two, is looking at yourself as you would look at a client or a friend. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you had to write a paragraph or a short essay about your client or your friend, what kind of things would you say? Okay, now pretend that you're your client. What would you say about yourself? Mentally divorce yourself from yourself. Wait, that sounds like that Austin Powers line. Or have you ever seen Austin Powers? Allow myself to introduce myself. But yeah, mentally divorce yourself from yourself and stop allowing opportunities to pass you by because you don't know how to message your value. 
So allow yourself the space to see yourself from a bird's eye view. What is your experience? What are the gifts and talents that you possess and have been blessed with? What are you passionate about? What have you dedicated yourself to becoming an expert in for years? What milestones have you reached for yourself and for your clients, if if applicable, right? And most importantly, what sets you apart? Start to really think this through and dig into the different facets of yourself, no matter how random or obscure some of those facets may actually be. And so that is the second part of this equation toward getting rid of that resistance to self-promotion. So the first one was silencing the naysayer, right? The second one is identifying your sizzle. So for example, in examining myself, I'll just throw myself out there for you. (laughs) I'll list out my talents and my career achievements, the skills that I've learned, what I've mastered, et cetera, et cetera. But that's not my sizzle. What is producer Jemmy's sizzle? Well, I'd say that there are three parts. Number one, I have a unique combination of skills. Okay, now now I'm thinking of the quote from Taken. You know, I have a a particular set of skills. Yes, I do. But (laughs) while I can't go be an international, like, 007 super ninja parent like Liam Neeson did in that movie, I can't quite kick butt like that. But I am a bit of a one-stop shop when it comes to bootstrapping a business and having two degrees in business and also having web design and development um, experience and content creation experience and SEO knowledge and clearly podcasting experience and data and analytics skills. And I've attended a top law school, yada, 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 yada. Like I'm kind of a freaking unicorn. Okay. (laughs) That's something that I make sure people really understand when they come to the table with me. Okay. It's that I have a combination of skills that you don't find in too many people. So that's part one of my sizzle. Part two of my sizzle is why I want to use those talents. Well, I truly, truly, truly want my clients to reach their goals, not my goals, their goals. Like it jazzes me up and gives me life when I know that they're achieving what they set out to achieve. Like I want people to live a life where they can do something they love. So that's the second part of my sizzle is that I'm just so motivated to help other people authentically reach their goals and live a life doing something they love. And the third part of my sizzle is that I'm a freaking bulldog. You've heard me mention it once or twice before on this show, but I'm a bulldog. That's the nickname that my dad gave me. He says, when I sink my teeth into something, I don't let go. Now, that's not always a good thing. (laughs) When it comes to helping people achieve their goals, like that usually is a good thing. So that's the third part of, of my sizzle. Okay. So now that you have one, silence the naysayer. Two, recognize the uniqueness that is your sizzle, right? It's time to three, collect the evidence. Dun, dun, dun. It's not that sinister. I don't know why I said it like that, but whatever. So in episode three, see, see those early episodes were really, really important. If you remember when I was talking in the early episodes, I said the stuff that's in these episodes is foundational. It leads to everything. Da, da, da. I wasn't kidding, right? So if you, <laughs> you missed those early episodes, go back, okay? But in episode three, I talked with you about building a portfolio. I said that you want to be consciously creating your portfolio and making sure that it lends to your overall positive online reputation. Because let's be honest, if you're wanting to be at all serious about asking people to turn over their hard-earned money to you for goods and services, you better make sure that you can show them that you're willing to work just as hard to earn their money that they worked as hard to get themselves. So you have to give them the goods, which means you have to collect the evidence. So how do you collect the evidence? Well, Rewind back to episode three and listen to what I shared about building your portfolio. All of that is uber important, but make sure that that portfolio is easily available online, whether through your website or through another platform like LinkedIn, 
You just got to make sure it's really easily available. And then you also want to make sure that you, number one, update your portfolio with each new sample of your work. Well, the good, the good stuff, right? <laughs> Put anything in that you're not that proud of, right? But update your portfolio constantly with good new samples of your work. Number two, you also want to make sure that you are updating your quote unquote portfolio with any bit of news that you have. So as an example, if you reach a business milestone, share that in your portfolio. If one of your clients has a major win, share that in your portfolio, right? All those kinds of things. Number three, you also want to make sure that you are gaining testimonials from your clients every chance you get and that you add those testimonials everywhere you can think of, like everywhere, okay? Your your website, your business cards, wherever, okay? You want to make sure that you share those testimonials. Don't just collect them and keep them to yourself. No, no, no. You want to make sure that everyone else gets to hear them as well. And number four, the fourth thing you want to make sure that you do when you're collecting this evidence is to think of your portfolio as a continuously living document. So again, it kind of goes back to that first point about make sure you're putting all the new samples, whether it's new samples of your work, news you share, like constantly think of your portfolio as a living document. And the final piece of the puzzle to creating a comfort for self-promotion is to just start getting the word out. So once again, we've talked about silencing the naysayer, identifying your sizzle, collecting the evidence, and now getting the word out. So I just want to share a couple of quick notes about gaining exposure through the media. So I suggest starting first with local media and then working your way out, because even if your brand is national, you are local. So you and what you've done as a business person or community leader or whatever you are, right, whatever it is, it can be a good news story for your local news. So you want to look up your local print, your local television news outlets, all those things. You want to find the column or the news desk that covers your industry and then reach out to the editor of that column and tell them about what you got going on, right? And then when you do land a write-up and you have a write-up in an article or you get to be interviewed on the news about what you're doing, be sure to close the loop. What I mean by that? <laughs> What I mean is be sure to create a post on your website. Do that thing I mentioned earlier when you're in the news, share it, right? Every milestone. And that includes when you are the news. Okay. So create a post on your website about it and show it off. Every single time you have a write-up in a news article, whatever it is, show it off. So the bottom line of all of this that we've talked about so far on this episode, there's still more to come, is that by keeping track of your accomplishments, Again, by building a portfolio, I've even recently started keeping a business journal too, but by keeping track, you allow yourself a better chance to shut down your internal or any other external naysayers that might be out there too, right? You get to shut down those naysayers and go after every opportunity that comes your way. So then now let's talk about how you do that. Okay. Let's talk about how to present yourself and the story of you and your brand. So what's something that you can hand someone or immediately point someone to that they can very quickly and within just a few moments get a good sense of who you are and what your brand is about? So you want to build your full portfolio online, but now we're talking about something that is quick and simple, right? Something short like an about page on your website or one sheet that you're handing out at a convention as an example. So let's first start by talking about presenting you and your story in this material. So you're less able to do some of the following that I'm going to share if your portfolio only exists on a third-party platform like LinkedIn. But if you have a website, which you really, really should, if you've gotten to know me at all, you know that I'm an advocate for having your own website. Or if you want to put together a one sheet about yourself to hand out like at a networking event or what have you then these tips will really, really help you. So firstly, you want to make sure that you have branding, okay? And that, that branding is consistently used across all things. That includes your story space as well. Again, your website's about page, 
your physical one sheet, whatever. So use a consistent palette of colors. Use a certain font type. Use your logo. Okay, don't forget your logo. (laughs) All of that kind of stuff should be found on the material that we're talking about and be very, very visible. So aside from the general styling of it, you definitely want to have a good explanation contained in that material of who you are and what your brand and business are about. So as an example, on my about page, you'll find that I've highlighted my podcasting expertise, but also I highlight my mission of helping people follow their passions in life. That whole dreamers become doers thing, because that really gives insight into who I am and what my motivations are. And I also use certain font types around like on everything. (laughs) And I definitely have a specific color palette too that is consistent across pretty much all of my stuff. So if you see the show art for this show, if you look at FlintstoneMedia.com, FloridaPodcastNetwork.com, like most of my stuff has certain colors that are used over and over and over again. I'm not perfect at it, right? But it is a conscious effort. And so I want it to be a conscious effort for you as well on all of these things. And you also, let's see on, again, bring it back to this most immediate material, like oh, an about page on your website or one sheet that you're handing out to someone. You also want to make sure that you're including in that some good visuals. It could be graphics. It could be pictures uh, of you or, or objects or whatever, or some other strategic visual. But the idea is to give whoever's eyes land on it an immediate sense of your brand before they've read a single word. So what you're basically doing is that whole portfolio that you spent time creating. Now you need like a little introductory window into it. Okay. A little preview space of everything else that's behind the curtain so that it grabs people's attention and causes them to maybe reach out and contact you or take a deeper dive into your portfolio. Next, let's talk about presenting your work in a way that immediately highlights the best stuff because we've talked about you and highlighting who you are and your motivations and your story. But what about your work? If you're only able to present a quick snapshot of your work, what would you want someone to see or hear or otherwise experience? If you're an author, for example, perhaps you'd want that to be a passage of your work and what it means towards your mission. If you're a graphic artist, that immediate small collection could be a flyer with a grid layout of some of your work, for example. Or if you're a podcaster like me, then it could be putting together a sizzle reel that's like five to 10 minutes of some of your best moments of your show, right? The point is that this is the best of the best, like like a movie trailer, but with all the best parts and spoilers right in it and nobody minds, nobody gets mad, right? No spoiler alerts needed because people are coming and looking at the material for the spoilers. And so you want to try to pick samples that show off all sides and aspects of your work in this very quick, easy delivery, whatever it is, or at least the key aspects of your work. So as an example, if you're a sculptor and you're putting together a flyer, then you may have one image on your grid of images that is a sculpture that you did using metal, right? You might have one that is clay, one that is wood, one that is stone, for example, just to kind of showcase all these different materials that you can work. Or if you're an event planner, maybe you can have images that you choose to include on your flyer or on your website's about me page, like just like that highlight the most important things that are of like the different types of events you produce. And so now that I've seen, oh, you can produce a wedding, you can produce a birthday party, you can produce a corporate event, whatever. Now I'm going to take a deeper dive into your portfolio. I'm sure you see where, where we're going with all this, right? When you want to go after opportunities and keep growing and building your brand, you want to present yourself to those opportunities by being able to quickly, one, share your story, and two, share a snapshot of your portfolio. All of that is going to incentivize them to take that deeper dive. So now let's bring all of this together, okay? Because as you've heard, I'm pulling together concepts from several past episodes to drive this lesson home. So now let's imagine you have done all this stuff, right? You have an opportunity in front of you and you've done all that you can do to put 
the framework in place. You have silenced the resistance to self-promotion by working on silencing the naysayer, by identifying your sizzle, by collecting the evidence, and by getting the word out. But you've also put together a way to quickly present your story on a one sheet or about page. And you figured out how to put together a quickly digestible snapshot of your portfolio, a grid of images or a sizzle reel or whatever, right? So well done. All of that is an encapsulation of your sizzle. Now, the last thing you need to give yourself the best chance to land that next opportunity is to know how to communicate with the person on the other side. So I just want to close with the number one most important thing you need to know, and I've covered it in a deep dive in episode nine, and the tip is definitely given away in the title of the episode. (laughs) The title of the episode is sales, dot, 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 less talking, more listening. Essentially, if you don't pause to listen first, you can end up going into a pitch all hot, like totally on fire, only to realize you've completely missed the point of their interest in meeting with you in the first place. And that point is their pain point. And the key to landing that sale or speaking opportunity or new client or whatever, it's all some sort of sales, right? The key to landing that sale is figuring out how to solve that potential client's pain point. So what is a pain point? (laughs) Well, at its simplest measure, it is their problem that's waiting for your solution. And you discover that pain point by making sure that you listen to them first. Why? Because they will reveal all, all, all. Sorry, I had a thermistic spin on there. I don't know why. I'm just doing me. (laughs) But anyways, they will tell you exactly what their needs are and why they're looking to you to solve them. So your first job is to listen. Then just before you open your mouth and you start talking, you want to in your head really quickly formulate the strategy of your answer Think through how you are going to fulfill your needs. Or maybe you don't have to do it so quickly. Maybe it's an opportunity that you see online. So you have enough enough chance to like submit a form or whatever, but think it through, right? But you want to present your angle with your sizzle at the center of it. So again, using me as an example, when I'm speaking with a potential podcast client, they definitely know very quickly all the different elements of my sizzle, okay? But then I share how I'm going to solve their pain point from the angle of my sizzle. So if you are building, let's say, a social media business as an example, and you were, I don't know, an accountant in a past life. Guys, I'm a podcaster now. I was a data analyst in in a past life. Okay, I'm sure this scenario could happen. So let's say you're building a social media business and you're an accountant of past life. Well, you can definitely use that experience to easily approach accounting firms to run their social media accounts. And that's going to be like the low hanging fruit way that you start to build your portfolio even further, right? If you are an event planner and have a real talent for graphic design, then you can share that being able to turn your ideas into concept from your head into concept pieces on paper or digital screens or whatever, that you can show the client yourself, right? That you can do that yourself rather than having to hire a separate graphic designer, that you have shorter turnover times and lower costs. So your main service is event design and production. Your sizzle is the graphic design talent and the pain point you're able to solve for that potential client is to help them get an event designed and produced in a very short amount of time and on a very strict budget. So that's just an example. And I'll include a link in the show notes to episode nine for you so that you can hear my full insights into this sales approach where listening is at the center of it because it really, really does close the loop on this whole entire showcasing your sizzle concept. But the bottom line is that your sizzle is based on your uniqueness 
And your success will be tied to your ability to showcase that uniqueness as your sizzle in creating opportunities. So one opportunity I wanted to share that has come to fruition because of a lot of these efforts that I've made over the years to build my brand is to now be a brand ambassador for Good Pods. Good Pods. Oh my gosh. Good Pods. It's quickly become my favorite podcast player. And it's because they've made it social and solved so many nagging freaking discoverability issues in this space. So if you're listening to this podcast now, I'd like you to download the Good Pods app right now and find me under my handle at producer Jemmy. And I'll be doing a Facebook live here soon with JJ Ramberg, who is one of the founders of the app and previously from MSNBC. So you can hear the story of how we've gotten to know each other over the years and how I've managed to showcase my sizzle. They've kept coming back, you know, (laughs) but also how and why she and her brother created good pods. So download the app, follow me there as producer Jemmy, And we can chat about these episodes of Business in the Bedroom and all the business advice that I share with you. We can chat about it right there in the app because I've created a Dreamers Become Doers group there that I would love for you to join and participate in as well. So let's grow as a Dreamers Become Doers community on the Good Pods app. And so the other opportunity I wanted to tell you about is actually my brand new other show, which has also come about through lots of efforts of showcasing my sizzle, guys, is the PodFest podcast. It's the first official podcast from the PodFest Multimedia Expo, the largest conference for independent podcasters in the U.S. So if you're building a business where podcasting is a part of it, you definitely want to dial into that show. And I'll, of course, include a link to that in the show notes as well. But those are two opportunities that have come about because I have not been shy about collecting evidence to showcase my sizzle. (laughs) Thanks for tuning into the podcast today. I know it was a little bit longer than usual, but it was jam packed with all this great info that I have kind of reworked from my She Podcast live presentation for you here. Because I'm sure you're listening to this because you're either running a business from your bedroom or you're thinking about it. So I want to always bring practical advice that can really help you. But I also want you to be part of our conversation. So this isn't just like a one way street here. So pop into Clubhouse. In case you haven't heard me talk endlessly about Clubhouse, we support each other's dreams and goals. And I answer questions on the regular in rooms on Clubhouse. And we're never short of being blessed with people making amazing connections in those rooms. So look for my Dreamers Become Doers Club on Clubhouse. And be sure to also now find Dreamers Become Doers as a group on the Good Pods app. Woohoo! You can follow me there at Producer Jemmy as well. It's pretty awesome. So that's Good Pods and I'll put a link in the show notes. And please reach out to me And let me help you on your journey from being a dreamer to becoming a doer. You can leave me a message or find my email address and all the social media handles at bizinthebedroom.com. That's B-I-Z in the bedroom.com. And remember, what do I always say? (laughs) Hit it hard. Keep the lights on. 